Yep. Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the great pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. Good to see you. I am up in the uh, Saratoga doing a uh, Saratoga edition of uh, of Horse Center for the Belmont Racing Festival. Yeah, I always know when you're in Saratoga, Matt, from the, the rooster above your head there. That's uh, that's good news that you're up there. I wish I could be with you, but without further ado, let's jump right in. We got a lot to talk about today. Let's first look at a field of 10 loaded up, going to be loaded up for the Belmont Stakes. $2 million, Matt. Of course, this year's Belmont is a mile and a quarter because it's at Saratoga. We got the Derby winner. We got the Preakness winner, but the favorite is Sierra Leone pictured there in our graphic, Matt. Let's start from the rail out. And from the rail out, we got speed on the inside because Seize the Gray is coming back. On Derby Day, he won the Pat Day Mile. On Preakness Day, he won the Preakness. Can he do it again in the Belmont Stakes, Matt Shipman? Why not? It's D. Wayne Lucas, Brian. So so why not? He's got a hot horse. And you, you know, we know the coach, when he's got a hot horse, He's going to put him in the game again. And uh, I guess the the draw uh, on the rail is, is no problem. We know where he's going to go. He's going to go the lead, and he's going to try and win the race the way he won the Preakness. Yeah, I, I think there will be more speed in here. But, of course, the scratch of fierceness last week uh, means maybe a little bit less early pressure for Seize the Gray. The son of Arrogate, as Matt says, is getting better and better. Speed, I like those morning line odds at 8-1 to one on the morning line there for Seas the Gray, the Preakness winner. Number two is Resilience, Matt. We weren't sure Resilience was going to run for trainer Bill Mott, but uh, I guess he's doing well, the son of Into Mischief. Uh, the, uh, the winner of the Wood Memorial, two starts out. He made a wide move, uh, and I guess he fooled announcer Larry Kalmus, uh when he made that wide move, uh, getting close to the lead in the Kentucky Derby, but then he flattened out down the stretch. Yeah, I thought he ran a good race, uh, 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 Brian, in the Kentucky Derby. Uh, ended up in sixth place, which was better than a lot of horses. And he, and he did get to second place at one point. And that win in the Wood Memorial was also a good performance. It was a little bit of a last-minute decision from Bill Mott to put uh, resilience uh, in the Belmont, but apparently he's been training really, really well. So why not uh, give him a shot? Yeah, I think that's a good sign for resilience. The fact that Mott is willing to run him. Uh, yet another horse in this field, Matt, who I think is in with a shot. If we look at each of these 10 horses, I'm not willing to completely throw out any of the 10. And uh, yeah, like I said, that was a big wide move resilience made, or not a big move, but a wide move well wide when he was uh, trying to take the lead there in the Derby. So uh, certainly lost a lot of ground to the winner of the Kentucky Derby. And the winner of the Kentucky Derby, of course, is the number three. That's Mystic Dan. Matt. Mystic Dan has been very good this spring, winning the Derby. Chase sees the Dan all the way around last time when second in the Preakness. Uh, Mystic Dan, it's, it's nice, frankly, in this day and age to see a horse running in all three legs of the triple crown. And he certainly deserves to be here. Yeah, absolutely. And, and he is the only one, he's the only survivor of all three races in the triple crown. And, and I, that, that is extremely com commendable considering how well he ran uh, in the Derby and the Preakness. And now to give a shot to the Belmont, I guess he's a, he's a pretty, uh, Durable horse that bounced back, bounced back very quickly for Kenny McPeak. Yeah, the fact that McPeak is running him tells us that he is doing well. He continues to do well. He continues to eat up and he continues to look good out on the track uh, in the morning. So Mystic Dan, first and second in the first two legs, deserves a shot in the third leg. Uh, might be he's on the rail there and there is some speed to his inside. He might... Uh, 
uh, a drop back to the inside again and uh, have kind of a familiar trip we've uh, grown accustomed to with the son of Golden Sense. Number four, board Mike Maker has some good New York breads. Here's one, the Wine Steward. Won his first three races. He's been second in his last three, Matt. Uh, two races this year. Could he move forward off a, a second last time in the Peter Pan? Um, I don't know, Brian. I, I, I think I would uh, consider uh, the chances of Wine Stewart to run well again as uh, pretty likely. Do I think that is going to be enough for him to uh, – be a win contender in this kind of field. I probably don't feel that way, but Brian, this New York bread has, has rarely, rarely run a bad race. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Matt. In fact, he's never worse than second in six starts and, and most of them stakes races. So the wine steward, a horse to uh, a, a horse to look out for here, but I, I'm with you. I think he probably has found his toughest spot yet. In fact, I'm sure he's found his toughest spot yet and maybe a difficult spot here for the wine steward. Let's uh, look at this time form U.S. pace projector here now as we're just about way into this field, Matt. Uh, we mentioned that C's Gray uh, will be speed, and you see some horses uh, out there with them. Number six, door knock. Number 10, mind frame. Uh, resilience uh, uh, is a little farther back. You see the Derby winner uh, back in seventh here on the pace projector. So they're looking at a fast pace perhaps led by Seize the Gray. Yeah, absolutely. And and, and that seems uh, that seems particularly fair. We'll talk a little bit more about Dornock uh, in a couple horses. Yeah, uh, there should be some speed in here. I don't know if it's quite as much as this graphic will attest to, but uh, we should have a solid pace in, in a, what is a 10 for a long race. And, and sometimes 10 for a long races get much stronger paces than 12 furlong races. So this could set up for the closers. One of the horses I expect to be a little farther back and, and probably a little farther back than you see on this time form US pace projector is the number five, Antiquarian. Antiquarian uh, had some trouble uh, early on. Uh, he broke through the gate in the Louisiana Derby. He was bothered at the start of the Louisiana Derby. He had a little bit of traffic. All in all, didn't run a bad race in that mile 360. Louisiana Derby coming out of a maiden race. And then he came back and won the Peter Pan. I like the way this son of a preservationist is moving forward for trainer Todd Pletcher. Absolutely. And he looked very good winning that uh, winning that Peter Pan stakes, Brian. Excuse me if I sneeze. Uh, um, yeah, uh, Antiquarian uh, is one of three in this Belmont Stakes field for Todd Pletcher. Of course, Pletcher has won the Belmont Stakes four times in the past. And I will point out historically, Brian, and, and, and you know, you can do with it whatever you want. All four of those winners that Pletcher had in the Belmont Stakes did run on Kentucky Derby weekend. And, and so certainly the three that he has in this Belmont Stakes are different than that. But you know, nobody's better than uh, having horses ready for the Belmont Stakes. Again, it's the mile and a quarter Belmont Stakes, not the mile and a half. Yeah, and either way, it's a distance race for these three-year-olds, and I think Antiquarian is one who wants a distance. Johnny Velasquez, uh, one of the greats of of our last uh, three decades or so in American race. Saddle again after winning the pan 12 to one on the morning line. I'm liking those odds too, Matt. There's Dornock, uh, who is uh, a horse who could be out on the lead, a horse who had a little bit of trouble added in the Kentucky Derby. He's 10th, he's a horse who's fought before. He's a, a great stakes winner at both two and three. Why don't I like more in this spot? I'm not sure, Brian. I, I I have nothing to help you change your mind on that. I don't really like him particularly in, he, in here. I don't really like that the pace projector has him uh, that far in front. He really has not been able to get to the lead and, and show the kind of speed that he did earlier in his career in his last two races, certainly when the quality of the field got tougher so uh um i don't know what to expect from door knock in here
Yeah, Trigon often is uh, uh, warning the fields uh, uh, that he's going to send his horse. And we don't always see it, but it'll be to see if Doorknock gets a much more aggressive ride here under an aggressive rider, Luis Saez, in the Belmont Stakes. Number seven, Matt, is protective. Uh, the longest shot on the board of the three from Todd Pletcher in the field. But if you look at that Peter Pan, uh, there were some things in there. There were some signs that protective could have been better than his third place finish. He, he, he didn't have all the running room that the top two had. Uh, before that, he rallied for third in the Wood Memorial. Protective might be a horse coming up to this race uh, on the upswing and could be a live long shot. Tyler Gaffleon will be in the irons. Yeah, and Brian, uh, uh, you don't see a maiden run in the Belmont Stakes uh, very often, but obviously this is not your typical maiden. No, he hasn't won a race yet, but you have already mentioned the third place finish in the Peter Pan, the third place finish in the Wood Memorial. Not your typical maiden. Yeah, absolutely. Protective uh, uh, could... Uh... Uh, break that maiden in, in a big way on uh, Saturday at Saratoga. We'll see. Honor Marie is the eight. Honor Marie is one of the horses we thought was a long shot possibility, along with Mystic Dan in the Kentucky Derby. Honor Marie kind of got uh, sideswiped and crunched at the start of that Kentucky Derby. Gets a different rider here, Florent Jaru, for trainer Whit Beckman. Beckman and uh, Honor Marie trying to bounce back from a tough eighth place finish in the Kentucky Derby. Yeah, and in that Kentucky Derby, Brian, yeah, he, he got roughed up at the beginning, and he was literally last uh, in uh, uh, after uh, a few of the early calls in the Kentucky Derby. So managing to find his way through there and get to eighth uh, in the Kentucky Derby is, is certainly noteworthy. He was second in the Louisiana Derby. Uh, maybe hasn't had the best of luck in his uh Last few races, certainly a horse that's talented, and, and uh, I fully expect Honor Marie to make to be making a good run down the stretch at the end of the ten furlongs. But Kenny outclosed the number nine horse. The number nine horse, of course, is the morning line favorite, Sierra Leone. You see again on this time form U.S. Pace projector with a fast pace up front, Sierra Leone well back in ninth on the pace projector and uh, honor marie not even on the board there uh even deeper back so those two will be the ones that are uh, trying to make one big run in the field sierra leone has done nothing wrong he's two noses away from an undefeated record in five starts really impressive wins in the sea uh, uh, in the uh risen star at fairgrounds and then, of course, the bluegrass at Keeneland before the Kentucky Derby. He looked by a desperate, desperate nose. He was lugging in the entire stretch, uh, lugging in, not aside. He, he looks like the horse to beat in here. He'll get pace. He's back at 10 furlongs. There's a lot to like, obviously, with the morning line favorite. Yeah, certainly a lot to like. And, yeah, just thinking about the fact that uh, Sierra Leone is a significant favorite in the morning line when you're talking about having the the horses like Seize the Gray, the Preakness winner, and Mystic Dan, the Kentucky Derby winner, and you've got Sierra Leone for Chad Brown uh, as the favorite. Yeah, and, and Chad, after the, the draw for the Belmont Stakes on Monday, talked about, you know, what's gone on since the Derby. They're going to make a little equipment change in terms of the type of bit that is going to be in the mouth, hopefully giving the rider a little bit more control than he's had in the past. Chad said that uh, uh, Sierra Leone has taken well. He's comfortable with the new bit. But the difficulty for Chad has been that um, Sierra, Sierra Leone doesn't show any of those tendencies in the morning, whether it's a leisurely gallop or in a more pressured workout uh, against other horses. So he's not sure what kind of effect this new bit will have uh, on Sierra Leone. Uh, one other thing is, of course, a new rider, Flavian Pratt, will be aboard after replacing Tyler Gaffleone, who rode them uh, uh, infamously rode him in the Kentucky Derby. So that'll be interesting for the race favorite Sierra Leone. 
still a lot to like in those past performances, despite the lugging in that he's done in several races now. Number 10, I, I was surprised when I saw the morning line odds on number 10, Matt. Mind frame uh, coming out of a maiden and an allowance win is a clear second choice over the Kentucky Derby winner, over the Preakness winner at 7-2. to two. Trainer Todd Pletcher, jockey Irad Ortiz, Matt. Uh, two and a half months ago, this horse had never run a race. Is is he ready to win the Belmont and at those odds? Well, you know, Brian, uh, let me talk a little bit about the, the morning line odds first. Yeah, I agree with you, Brian. If it was, if in fact you were saying that seven to two seems a little bit low, I think in my eyes it seems a little bit low when you're talking about uh, the kind of field that we have here, but. Who am I to argue with David Aragona, who is one of the best uh, morning line makers out there? So uh, um, we'll see about the price. But yes, I mean, a mind frame for Todd Pletcher, Todd Pletcher, that maiden win at Gulfstream Park by almost 14 lengths was absolutely brilliant and fast earning him a speed figure as good as any horse in the field, be it the Kentucky Derby winner or the Preakness winner or uh, Sierra Leone. Uh, um, and then he came back and, and the victory in the allowance race was, uh, was a little bit, I, in my eyes, easier. He was a little bit more geared down at the end of that. Mind frame, in my eyes, can, can be, could be any kind and we'll certainly get a better feeling about that stepping up to this kind of competition yeah and and that that lot what you said matt is huge for mapping up in in a big way yeah he was very impressive in a seven furlong uh maiden debut at golf stream at, at the end of march and then of course uh kentucky derby kentucky derby day it was an easy allowance race and and he coasted pretty much the whole way but now all of a sudden he goes into this 10 furlong Belmont stakes with speed on the outside. Um, yeah, 7-2. to two. I, I don't doubt that he'll get bet in here. Uh, I, I do wonder if those odds, uh, though, are going to be worth it for a horse with so little experience in this Belmont stakes. The day before is the Acorn stakes, and, and we were wondering last week if there was any chance Torpedo Anna might be part of the Belmont because she's that good. And the uh, the the uh, daughter of Fast Anna has decided to go in the Acorn or her connections have decided for her that she'll run in the Acorn on Friday. And uh, probably a good decision. I think we were both agreed last week that Torpedo Anna probably belongs in the Acorn. But uh, I'll tell you what, the Oaks was not an easy field. The Acorn is not an easy field. Again, this is Friday, race 12 on Friday, half a million dollar grade one, a mile and an eighth at Saratoga here. Uh, Matt, there's nine fillies in the Acorn. Eight of them are graded stakes winners. The only one that's not just ran third in the Kentucky Oaks. So it's, it's hard to complain about this Acorn field. Yeah, it's a, a really good field, Brian, and a number of them uh, did run in the Kentucky Oaks. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, graded stakes winners up and down. Yeah, nice field. We'll start with Becky's Joker, the rail. Uh, Becky's Joker made her debut in a graded stakes last summer at Saratoga, Matt, and uh, she won. Uh, she surprised a lot for uh, – Trainer Gary Contessa, and she's she's only had two races now. She's been off almost a year, and here she comes back into this spot. As crazy it was for her to run in a graded stakes race at Saratoga in her career debut and win it, now she's in the acorn. What what she's uh, found here? What a tough spot for sure. Uh, uh, Brian. Now, it was also uh, trainer Gary Contessa's comeback race as he returned uh, to training. But uh, since then, Brian, he hasn't won very many races. I think he's only won two races since that uh, uh, Schuylerville upset by Be Becky's Joker. Yeah. Now, as I go to the second horse, and I think the uh, 
the more dangerous stort horses of the acorn start i i will mention that the kentucky oaks was run on an off track a wet track a lot of rain friday now there is a chance that we get some rain here at saratoga uh friday and saturday rain is uh, certainly a possibility in the forecast so we'll have to keep an eye on what the track will look like on friday for the acorn saturday for the belmont stakes in this belmont festival but that's another concern uh, i mean this up up because there were a bunch of horses who didn't quite run their race in the Kentucky Oaks. Maybe it was the condition, but uh, Power and Leslie two here came in with very good form to the Kentucky Oaks and just did not on that off track at Church House. Yeah, and, and uh, just you know a little bit more about the the weather. It it it's supposed to rain all day tomorrow on Thursday for the first day of the. Uh, racing festival and then the amount of rain on friday and uh saturday is supposed to be less the forecast for saturday it, it's kind of like one of your typical saratoga days in the summer where there's a chance of thunderstorms in the afternoon and and if you've ever been up to saratoga that's almost the forecast on uh every single day but anyway, I digress there just with some information. Uh, yeah, Power Squeeze, you know, uh, Brian, 12 to 1 on the morning line, was sixth in the Kentucky Oaks, but before that ha had three stakes race victories in a row. Yeah, down in Florida, uh, maybe a little bit lesser competition, but she did face some decent fillies down there in Florida. Uh, still, you got to wonder what the Kentucky Oaks means for Power Squeeze, as you do for Leslie's Rose, who – was a good looking winner of the grade one Ashland at Keeneland in the race before the Kentucky Oaks and the daughter of Into Mischief just didn't do it on an off track there. She's bouncing back, giving a lot of respect here on the morning line uh, as a clear third choice. Um, it, it, it will, we'll have to see if she can bounce back on a different kind of track, if it is a different kind of track on Friday. Yeah, uh, looking to see if... Uh if she can bounce back that win in uh, ashland is uh is bookended by a, th a third on the D in the devona dale at gulfstream and then that uh 13th in the kentucky oaks that you mentioned i don't know uh five to one would seem to me like a little bit of a short odds for my liking pletcher and ortiz i read ortiz again on horses that that we're saying might be short odds in the Belmont. And going into the Kentucky Oaks, uh, I thought Torpedo Anna was the best horse, and I thought just FYI was the second horse. I, I was finally right. Uh, just FYI ran a very good race in the Kentucky Oaks to be second, the champion two-year-old filly, the daughter of Justify. Uh, but uh, only second best in the Kentucky Oaks. Is, is she going to be able to turn the tables on a track she's won on before? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I think that's a question of of just how good is Thorpeda and Thorpedo Anna and, and Brian and I certainly have our feelings about that. Nothing wrong, Brian, with those two races this year for just FYI with the second in the Ashland, which was coming off the long layoff, and then the second in the Kentucky Oaks when you're talking about finishing second to the likes of Thorpeda and Anna and handling the rest of that field. Yeah, yeah, a good, good performances in both. I, I, I liked what I saw in the Ashland. I've liked what I've seen in the morning workouts, both before the Kentucky Oaks and after the Kentucky Oaks. So just FYI, coming back to a track where she has experience, uh, certainly uh, uh, the chief competitor in this tough field for Torpedo Anna. Matt, I'm going to throw up the uh, time form US pace projector again, this time for the Acorn. And we're going to take a look at where some of these fillies are projected to be early Oh, there we go again, a fast pace, uh, speed for sure. Torpedo Anna does not need the lead, but there she is out there on the nine, projected to be on the lead. Regulatory risks, third in the Kentucky Oaks. Number six, where's my ring? A disappointment in the Kentucky Oaks. And then a host of other fillies with some speed, including just FYI, My Main Squeeze, and Gunsong, all close. So, uh, uh, we're looking for a horse that could rally perhaps in this race. And, and, and maybe that brings up uh, the number two power squeeze again, but another fast pace projected here in the acorn. 
Yeah, and, and you look at that pace projector uh, uh, graphic, the entire field is bunched pretty closely together. Uh, and, you know, I don't know, that's usually an indication of a race where, yeah, there, there will be horses that are out front, but maybe that the time of those fractions won't be extremely fast. Yeah, I agree with you there, Matt. Like anybody in this race wants to run 45 in the nine for a long accord. So I, I'm with you there. Uh, taking a look at the field again, I, I mentioned Mike Maker has uh, some good New York breads. My main squeeze was disappointing. She was actually favored in the fantasy over Torpedo and a couple starts ago. Didn't run much that day, but she came back with a nice win at Churchill Downs, did the New York bread Philly. Yeah, nice win in the eight bells. Uh on uh, on Derpy weekend, uh, the eighth in the fantasy was was not up to the usual standards because before that, uh, my main squeeze had a couple of stakes wins. Those were in New York bred stakes races, but again, another really consistent uh, New York bred from Mike Maker that has shown the ability to step out and handle open company. Yeah, she did. That, that win at seven furlongs was pretty darn good in the eight, eight bells. Number seven, regulatory risk. The the She was beaten ring two starts back when Sack Gazelle had an improved performance there. And then she came back to be third in the Kentucky Oaks on that off track. A, a well-beaten third behind Torpedo Anna. And just FYI, I wonder if she's got any chance to turn the tables off that third in the Kentucky Oaks. Yeah, I don't get that feeling. Uh for uh from regulatory risk uh is trained by chad brown and, and that always make adds to the fact that you can't completely discount this philly mark hennig and uh johnny v have a gun song headed in the right direction into this acorn she comes off a very nice win in the black eyed susan sure it wasn't the field that you'll see here in the acorn, but it was another nice step forward for a daughter of Gun Runner. Uh, I think Gun Song is uh, one of the ones in here that uh, uh, could be a bit of a surprise. She should be part of a, a pace, and uh, I don't know, 12 to 1 on a horse coming off that nice win, the Black Eyed Susan, is, is a little attractive to me. Yeah, it should be. Uh, as you mentioned, made a nice step forward in the Black Eyed Susan. Uh, after running fourth in the Gulfstream Park Oaks. Uh, yeah, uh, this is a much tougher field, but if she is, in fact, a horse that could move forward, uh, um, she's going to have nice odds. Number nine is Torpedo Anna, Matt. She's, uh, she's won four out of five. Her four wins are ultra impressive. She's two for two this year as the daughter of Fast Anna for trainer Kenny McPeak. Brian Hernandez Jr. will again be on the easy Kentucky Oaks winner. I, I think it made sense what they did uh, in the Kentucky Oaks where they almost inherited the lead. They went to the lead. They took uh, they took uh, the bull by the horns, if you, if you will, in that field, and it was the right thing to do. I don't think she's a filly that needs the lead at all, though. Sitting on the outside, I, I would expect a nice stalking position. For me, Matt, it boils down to, will Torpedo Anna like the track at Saratoga on Friday? Yeah, and, and uh, Torpedo Anna, uh, four wins from five starts. Uh, you know, Brian really good horses like Thorpedo and, uh, 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 you know, they are versatile. She can take the lead if the lead, you know, is the place to go if nobody else is going and she wants to go faster than that, but she can certainly uh, uh, make a move from a little bit off the pace. I'll tell you, I mean, all week long uh, uh, when uh, McPeak has been asked about uh, Thorpedo Anna, he he seems to start his conversation every time by saying, you know, I I would have been comfortable running her in the Belmont Stakes. So you know, he he's very confident as always. And why shouldn't you be when you've got Thorpedo Anna in your barn? Yeah, we, we mentioned how it's a tough field, but on the other hand, Thorpedo Anna is the one to beat if she can run the race she did in the Oaks. I think she's a winner. Heck, I think if she runs the race she did in the fantasy, 
Center. Torpedo Anna, really good and will be tough. Saratoga could throw in a little bit of wrinkle, though, because it's a track some horses come to and just don't love. So we'll see. This is a good time to get to our suggested wagers for the – we handicapped the two biggest races of the weekend, the Belmont and the Acorn. So let's take a look at that now, Matt, and, and uh, see what we're suggesting to our Horse Center viewers, what to throw into the uh, the old uh, – uh teller or automated teller on your uh, home computer here i'll go first i see my name listed first matt and i'm going real simple i everybody knows i like torpedo and i've liked her all along long torpedo anna is my single in corn 20 two day daily double with the belmont i'm going with my uh two favorites in the belmont that'll be antiquarian who has great odds on the morning line and Sierra Leone, whose odds are not so much. I, I could chalk out with that second double, but I'm only playing two. There you go, $40 for that ticket. How about you, Matt? Hey, I, I you guys know I love the two-day daily doubles. And just by coincidence, coincidence Brian, uh, when I was typing up the graphics, seeing what you did, I've got one that is very similar to that. I, I am going to take what I feel is a free square with uh, – Thor Thorpedo Anna and use Thorpedo Anna again with two of the horses that you like, the Antiquarian, Sierra Leone, and I'm going to throw in Mind Frame. I also am going to do a two-day daily double, another one. There are a whole bunch of uh, two-day daily doubles uh, at, uh, uh, at, at, at the Belmont Racing Festival. I think some a bunch of them are $5 minimum bets, but please – but please check on that. I am going to combine a couple horses from the New York, which is a turf race. I've got two Europeans in English Rose and American Sonia from Charlie Appleby and Joseph O'Brien with those uh, horses, same horses from the Belmont States. There you go, Matt. Good luck with your wagers. Let's talk about one more race real quick. Uh, of course, the Met Mile is one of our favorite races of the year. A little disappointed that this year's Met Mile, Matt, only uh, attracted six horses at Saratoga. Usually it's a, a much bigger field. So the Met Mile will be Saturday on the undercard. You can actually bet a uh, double on this too, the Met Mile with the Belmont Stakes. And the field of six has attracted uh, a couple of the bigger names in the country as far as the older horses. Uh, White Abario, of course, last fall with the Breeders' Cup Classic. Uh, National Treasure last fall just missed in the Breeders' Cup battle, then came back and won the Pegs World Cup. Two big names. Which one of those two do you like better, Matt? Well, yeah, and I, I sometimes feel size is what is what it is, but when you have the two of the very best older dirt males in the country, uh, in this race, it, it's an intriguing matchup. And it's interesting to say about this field that three of the horses, National Treasure, Hoist the Gold, and White Barrio, are all coming back from having raced in that Saudi Cup in February, all three of them having raced not particularly well in there. It's hard, Brian, for me to separate National Treasure and White Barrio because they are very similar. They both had really big wins in, in a couple of the biggest grade one dirt races in the country. You mentioned the Pegasus World Cup uh, for National Treasure and the second in the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile behind the uh, uh, everybody's favorite uh, Cody's Wish and White Barrio who I guess was really a clunker in that Saudi Cup when he finished 10th uh, winning. But then before that, won the Classic, won the Whitney, and last year was third in the Met Mile. I think they're going to be pretty close in price, Brian, but the morning line odds say White a Barrio at 6-5. to five. So if, in fact, National Treasure is going to be a better price, I guess that makes me lean towards him a little bit.
Okay, yeah, I think uh, uh, Barrio deserves it off his Breeders' Cup Classic win. And don't forget, the Whitney was at Saratoga, and the Whitney might have been the most impressive race we saw last year. So White of Barrio coming back to Saratoga is, is, is a story, because that Whitney, last time he was there, was so big. Uh, interesting time for him, U.S. Pace Projector, in that they have the single file. I've never seen that in the Pace Projector. Uh, hoist the Gold. Uh, who has some Saudi Arabian run, uh, not uh, great, but he has run. Uh, they project to be ahead of the two favorites. National Treasure probably has a little bit more early speed than White Abario of the two. I thought he ran a good race in the Saudi Cup, but neither him nor White Abario have run since the Saudi Cup. Uh, so so there you have the two favorites. I'm going to look at uh, the, the four horse blazing sevens a little farther back, Matt, as a potential... Uh, upsetter in here because I've always felt like Blazing has had some talent. Uh, just hasn't been able to put it fully together. Of course, he just lost that Preakness to National Treasure in a real tight race last year. He comes back with a nice return race. So we'll see uh, if he can make some noise, a long shot in here. Uh, time for our top picks, Matt. Big show, big picks. I'll let you go first. And uh, let's go Let's go Friday first. Uh, you you, you want to do the Acorn as your, what's your top pick there? I think I think we already have a good idea. Yeah, no, I, I uh, thor so I'm all torpedo Anna in the acorn. Yeah, and, and I I don't know if if it's a free square, but I like her enough to not argue too much with Matt because there are good horses, especially just FYI behind her. But I'm all about torpedo Anna as well. I'm also picking an upset. Two horses coming out of their first race since the Saudi Cup. I don't really expect to win this, but if Blazing Sevens can run first or second, I'll be happy with my tickets. Matt, how about you? Yeah, I don't blame you with uh, liking uh, Blazing Sevens. Uh, uh, you know, that horse has flashed some talent throughout the years. And, 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 and in talking to Chad Brown after the draw, he was quick to remind and say, hey, don't forget this force uh, just missed winning the Preakness by a head. So, and, and you mentioned that. As I said uh, earlier, uh, uh, you know, obviously this is a, a clash between National Treasure and White Barrio. If they can come back, uh, I'm, if I'm interpreting the signals for National Treasure, uh, he's got that training pattern from Baffert that says you better watch out when he puts up a fast, six furlong workout which national treasure uh did and follows it up with just a more uh leisurely four furlong work uh, um so i'm gonna make national treasure my top pick don't be surprised and don't give me a hard time uh, uh horse center fans and said whoa matt's picking a baffert horse Yeah, I, I, both National Treasure and White Barrio are working very well for this cement mile. Uh, I would assume their trainers have them pretty ready, but still, there's there's a little question coming out of the Saudi Cup, uh, their first race since the Saudi Cup, into a tough spot. Finally, the Belmont. Uh, I'm going with Antiquarian. I, I really do, do think Sierra Leone is the horse to beat in here, but I love those morning line odds on a horse getting better and better for trainer Todd Pletcher. Uh, he might be the other Pletcher in here because uh, I guess people are going to jump on that undefeated two for two horse. But I think Antiquarian wants 10 furlongs. I think he'll sit a nice trip in the middle of the pack. I think he's got a big shot to do what Archangelo did last year. Different uh, circumstances, certainly, but that Peter Pan Belmont double. I'm going to try it with Antiquarian again. Yeah, good enough there, Brian. I would not be uh, unhappy to see that result uh, also. Um, I am going to uh, go with Mind Frame. Uh, you know, those those two races were so brilliant. It, it, it's got to have you thinking that Mind Frame could be any kind. And I get it. Sometimes, you know, uh, they don't go beyond that. But sometimes they turn into really great horses. Honestly, I didn't expect... Uh, mind frame in this race i expected him to take a little bit of an easier path but with pletcher opting for the belmont stakes i gotta think that he thinks that mind frame is awfully good i sure hope that the odds are higher than seven to two though yeah i i i'm i'm not with you on this one matt i uh, if mind frame wins you win, I lose because I'm not betting a horse coming out of a 
easy allowance race in his second race, uh, just uh, two months into his experience uh, running in this field. But hey, if he's special, maybe he wins. I, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, party shot from you, my friend. It's been a big show. It has been a big show. Uh, uh, Belmont Racing Festival. I will be there. I hope some of you Horse Center fans will be there. If not, enjoy the racing wherever you are, and good luck with your wagers. Well said, Matt. Thank you for watching every week as well. We appreciate it. Uh, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel here at Horse Racing Nation. Turn on those notifications. Leave us a comment. Thanks also to our friend Candace Curtis for the race graphics, Timeform US for the pace projectors we use, and of course, our sponsor, Derby Wars, the best contest site out there. Thanks, folks. Enjoy the Belmont, the Belmont at Saratoga. We'll see you next week for another big show of Horse Center. Until then, good luck.